This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. So we can't talk about EVs without talking about the Teslas. When Tesla first came onto the market, it made a huge impact, revolutionizing the way that we think about electric vehicles in the first place. Tesla proved that you can have a electric vehicle that looks nice, that's very usable, and it's also extremely fast. They made a big impact, and also now I think that other car manufacturers are kind of coming the way. Tesla has been leading the charge for a while and other car companies are only now starting to catch up. So I'm excited to see what they do next. But today we are taking a look at the Tesla Model 3 standard range. We'll start by talking about the specs of this car. It is a rear wheel drive only. We can go up and get an all wheel drive. We'll talk about that in just a second. This version has 430 kilometers of range and it does a zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds, which is pretty impressive. It doesn't feel like 6.1 seconds. When you press the accelerator, you fly. It's like a smack and it really puts you in your seat. I really enjoy the feeling and it's nice to see other people's reactions and feeling as well. It has a 50 kilowatt hour battery with 283 horsepower power. Keep in mind, the more you're pushing it, the more your range is going to go down and your winter range, it does vary, especially if you live in an area with a colder climate, you might lose half, you might lose some. I haven't been able to test it in the winter, but hopefully I will. And I will let you all know when I do. And you can also talking about now the other performance models, all the performance models, even the long range, they all look like this. So Tesla has a bunch of features and they're all built in. It's just software locked. So you want a performance upgrade? You can pay for that. You want rear heated seats? You can pay for that. There is always a debate on whether that's a good thing or not. I think you can see it as one way on the manufacturer side where it saves them time, but also on the consumer side, it would be nice to just have, if they're going to build a vehicle with everything in it, they might as well just give you everything in it. I get that. but. That's what we are with with the Tesla currently. So the difference between the performance and the, the long range all wheel drive is of course you get all wheel drive. That means you have a motor in the front and a motor in the back. I've driven the all wheel drive version of this car, the long range version of this car. It's incredibly fast. It's scary fast. So I recommend to get the long range. The performance, it depends. If you have the budget to do it, it does go up in price to almost $100,000 just for that. And Tesla is also, because the long range is so in demand, they've stopped taking orders until 2023. So right now, if you wanted to order right now, you're stuck with your standard range or your performance. You cannot get the 2022 version of the long range. So the price, we mentioned price a little bit before. The price tag for this vehicle is 65,000 Canadian and 50K US. That isn't including government incentives. Here in Quebec, the government incentives are a little bit better, so that number will come down depending on where you live. And I'm sure there is some government incentives in the US, but I just did it base. This is nothing added on. This is just base everything, 65K, 50 US. Now let's start with the not so good side of Tesla. Tesla has all these features. It is a high price point. You do get a lot of features, but you also are playing, paying for a little bit of the brand. The bad news is the build quality still exists even on the model that I'm standing next to. The model I'm standing next to has only 13,000 kilometers. It is a 2022 and it has a little bit of condensation in the rear light. Now, I don't know if that's something that's common to happen on newer cars. I haven't seen it on any of the newer cars that I've owned ever. So far, that's the only thing that I can say about it. I know I've heard some horror stories on Reddit and stuff like that of crazy panel gaps and all that stuff. I'm curious to know if when you go up in model, does that help things? Does that improve build quality? Because this is the base model. I haven't found anything else wrong with it, but I just thought I would mention it that the build quality issues are still a little bit there. So we mentioned the, the features being software lock. Well, one of those features is full self-driving. You can see that the car has sensors all around it in the front and even there's a little sensor up on the windshield as well that helps full self-driving. You can navigate on autopilot. So basically it'll stop at stop signs, stop at red lights, put its turn signal and do everything for you. However, that is a $20,000 add-on so the question needs to be asked, is it worth $20,000 yet? In my opinion, I don't know if it's worth $20,000. It is, if you have the budget, I absolutely recommend it. Tesla has done something incredible with that full self-driving. The reason I think that it's maybe not quite there yet is that 
you can't really rely on it. And for a $20,000 upgrade, I feel like I want to rely on it a bit more. And I'm sure it's gonna come. It's still in beta. I know there's a promise that it will be fully autonomous by X year. I can't remember what the year was, but there is a promise that it will work in the future. So it may be an investment now. That's the key thing that I think Tesla wants to wants people to probably know that once this thing is like so it's twenty thousand dollars now once this thing is fully reliable fully self-sufficient very minimal driver input needed it will go up you could probably see this going to like a 30 to forty five thousand add-on just to have that another thing worth noting is when i first started driving this car i had no premium connectivity premium connectivity is tesla's lte so all the tesla cars run and they're connected to tesla's own lte network but you do have to pay monthly for that it's 13 dollars a month but it allows you to use your spotify native your youtube and everything native if you don't use that you have to go through your Bluetooth. So you don't get to use the Spotify screen. You have to control everything from your phone. And the phone controls aren't that great. I mean, the, the Bluetooth, you could take your phone calls and all that stuff. But for me, I just, the experience of the Tesla improved so much with that premium connectivity. I do think it's still a good deal because I didn't see any data caps or anything like that. So you can consume as much YouTube, Netflix, and Spotify as you want per month, and it'll still always cost you $13 a month. I, I think that's how it is. From what I've read inside the vehicle, that's what it seemed to be like. And if it is, that's a good deal. So this Tesla has a trunk and a frunk. For people who don't know what a frunk is, it is a front trunk, short for frunk, whatever. It is actually usable on the Hyundai and the Kia models. They give you a little, a little flap that you can kind of open and you can basically put a cell phone in and that's it. They have a frunk. I think they did that just to say they could, but this one actually has a frunk. It's usable. And obviously you have the rear trunk space, which is a lot of room and it's also automatic this year. I know on the earlier year Teslas, it was not automatic. This year it is. And you can also notice that with the 2022 and I believe 2021 as well, you have a chrome deletion so there's no more chrome on the sides of the windows and the door handles and also the sensors are not chromed anymore they're all blacked out to me in my opinion that works so much better and it looks amazing so moving on to the interior the interior of this model is the all white personally i didn't think i would like the all white but after driving it for just only a day i'm attached to the all white i think if i get a tesla i'm, I'm gonna get the all white interior it requires a lot of maintenance but i think it's well worth it We'll stop there because it's a car the seats are also made out of synthetic leather still very comfortable to sit in i have no complaints there so there's actually no physical buttons on the interior it's all controlled by that massive 15 inch display it's super responsive the display i really like using it i know some people don't like having hard buttons it is it is to be said that if the screen goes off well you can't see your speed anymore and you, you can't use your navigation anymore but you can still drive the car in some cases it, it, it's a weird glitch that i've seen a few times so you also have wireless charging in here just under the screen you can place two phones and it, it will wireless charge again that's going to take from your range every time you do that so keep that in mind uh, but it's very nice to have it's it's super it's super usable you just plop your phone there and you forget about it and it also there's another feature that I really want to highlight, which is the toy box in this car. It's kind of like an entertainment feature or something, you know, you can show people when they get in the car. It's got things like the whoopee cushion thing, the, the fart on turn signal. Childish? Yes. But funny and entertaining? Absolutely. And I, I don't know, it just wouldn't be, it gives the car personality having things like that inside of it. You have like this, this megaphone thing where you can use the car's exterior speakers and like say words and it makes you sound a bit like Darth Vader. Uh, or you can even play your own music outside of the car. People might find that annoying. I find that very cool. So the toy box is, is a cool feature and if you ever sit in a Tesla, I recommend you checking it out. So before we actually get in and drive the car, I do want to mention Sentry Mode. If you've ever walked too close to a Tesla and you notice the lights flash, well, you're being recorded by Sentry Mode. It has, like I mentioned before, sensors all around the car and cameras all around the car. So the driver can then come back in and observe what happened in Sentry Mode. So it's a good anti-theft thing. Most people know the Tesla have sensory mode and it's kind of cool to look at what people are doing around the car so that about does it for the interior and exterior showcases of this vehicle now let's take it on the road and see how the 2022 tesla model 3 standard range drives on the road so yeah the the car drives very nicely it's it's addicting if i can say that like yes tesla has all these 
build quality issues and it's expensive, but like, there's just something about it that makes you want it. There's just something about it that makes you look at it and go, that car is so nice, I need one of them. It's maybe the Apple effect where it's like, wow, the iPhone's so crazy, I need it. And, and maybe Tesla has that kind of brand identity too. But it just drives so well, it's so easy to drive. This has one pedal driving, so as soon as I'm letting off the gas, it's actually putting uh, energy back into the battery, which is awesome. But it's also, I never have to touch the brake, it just kind of glides to a complete stop, much like we saw on the Kia EV6 that had iPedal. I find Tesla's version of this, uh, you know, the, the one pedal driving, a little bit more smooth. It may be just because I wasn't used to the iPedal, but I just find this version, this Tesla's version of this, way more smoother. So the zero to 60 in this car, it says 6.1 seconds, but when you press on the power, like that, holy moly, it feels like three seconds and I'm already at 100. It's just absolutely insane. I don't know if Tesla's under, you know, under promising, over delivering. It really feels like that's exactly what they're doing because it's just insanity, complete and utter insanity when you press the pedal. And so this is the standard range. I can't imagine what the performance feels like. It probably feels like a, just an absolute punch in the face that puts you right in the back of the headrest. Cause I mean, look at this. Are you kidding me? I'm already at 110. It's insane. They're like, don't get me wrong. The other EVs in this market are quick, but this is just on the, uh, it just feels so different. The acceleration just feels so pure, it's so smooth, so smooth. There's nothing like, uh, there just isn't much that competes with it. Maybe the Porsche and stuff like that. I'd really like to try one of those and, and the Lucid as well, I'm sure does compete with it. But so far, in terms of my driving experience, that acceleration is addicting. Now this is a rear wheel drive only. So if you're in a colder climate, that may cause a problem for you if you have heavy snowfall. Again, I think it really is gonna depend on how good your winter tires are. But it does have anti-slip, which kind of is a computer saw, like a computer aid thing where it kind of helps you get out of, get out, get stuck. If you're stuck in mud, get unstuck. If you're stuck in mud, stuck in snow, whatever. It should help you out. But if you have the budget, I'd recommend the all wheel drive. However, you can't order it yet. When you can, I would recommend it because there is a four wheel drive. And especially if you're in a colder climate, you want the extra range because you're going to lose some in the winter. And you also don't want to get stuck. You want four wheel drive. You want to be able to kind of cut through any type of snow. The vehicle is very heavy because of the battery. So you kind of have an advantage there even with the base rear wheel drive. But I would recommend getting the all wheel drive, especially for colder climates. I also want to mention Tesla's supercharger network. So far, other companies haven't really caught up in that game. They're maybe not as reliable. As far as I've seen, just by looking on Reddit and also looking at it myself, doing some research just in the car, you can pretty much drive across Canada, at least the main parts of Canada in a Tesla and kind of be okay with the supercharger network. I'm not sure how easy it is to do it with other EVs that don't use Tesla supercharging. I know Tesla has promised to enable other EVs to use a supercharger network, which will change that game. And I have immense respect for Tesla doing that. They could literally just lock it to their Tesla cars and that's it and nobody could say anything about it. But the fact that they're opening it, hopefully this is correct information, they're opening it to other EVs is huge and it'll help the EV market as a whole. I did also just try to charge the car just based like on just a normal wall outlet. I had the car on charge last night for probably about 12 hours and I probably got 25% of battery. I don't know, you can't really complain about that. Yes, it is extremely slow, but at the same time, you still get some kilometers back that, you know, you're not paying for a supercharger. Obviously paying for a supercharger is not even as close as it would be the price of paying for a full tank of gas. Probably you can get like 400 kilometers of range for probably about like 15 to $20 where a full tank of gas is 600 kilometers costs $60. The difference is crazy. I really feel like the infotainment in this car requires a whole video itself. There's just so much because everything is controlled. I, I almost feel like sometimes when I'm using the infotainment, I'm literally just driving a computer with four wheels. It also has the climate control. The climate control is very cool. It brings up like this, this white background where you can, you can see exactly where your airflow is going. 
It's very, very cool. It's a very cool visual. The touchscreen, like I said in the beginning, is so, so responsive. I haven't had any lag, no glitches at all in the touchscreen, no software glitches. The only slight glitches I had was when I was using the autopilot feature. The autopilot feature is very cool and extremely useful for doing long trips. So if I was saying to travel from Montreal to Toronto, I would probably be on autopilot like 75% of the time. It's just so good. Sometimes it does disengage because I can't find the lines. I, you can blame that on terrible Quebec roads. You know, sometimes I can't even see the lines. I can't really blame the computer for not recognizing it. But other than that, it's been super stable and pretty reliable. It's, it is scary to let the computer kind of take a curve in it, but the, it's incredible to watch the, the steering wheel move and go through corners. It's just, it's cool. It's cool and it doesn't get old. That's the thing, it doesn't get old and it's very, very useful. The autopilot feature is very, very useful. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you can get full self-driving for, full self -driving for navigation on autopilot, but it is a $20,000 add-on and there is the question to be asked, is that worth it yet? And also keep in mind, it will go up when it really is fully reliable, when it's fully self-driving, that's gonna go up that price. So. If you think it's worth it now, and you have the 20K extra, why not? I would if I had the 20K extra. You can literally summon the car from your phone. It's incredible. Being Having a background in technology and, and working with software and stuff like that, what Tesla has been able to achieve in this vehicle is, it's incredible. It, it, that's all it is. It's just, they've changed the way that we look at EVs. Before the Tesla came out, I don't think I would have ever wanted an EV. And now I'm considering all these other EVs because they're just all so good. People say that EVs, a lot of EVs drive the same. I don't think so. I think that probably the Model Y and the Model S will drive the same because well, they're the same drivetrain. Same with the Kia and the Hyundai, they're the same drivetrain. You expect them to drive the same. But you can't compare a Kia to a Hyundai. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't compare a Tesla to a Hyundai they drive differently. It's not the same feeling at all. I'd say that Tesla's kind of more entered this luxury EV state. They do need to fix their, to, to truly be the luxury electric vehicle, like I think maybe they want to be, you need to fix your build quality issues. You can't charge $65,000 for a car and there's condensation or there's panel gaps or you, you just can't, you have to, you have to rein that in. And I think they're trying their best. I mean, they're not on the same level, like we mentioned before. The steering wheel of this car also feels super, super good. I always keep it in sport. I'm a fan of tight steering, but you have different options. You have your chill mode, you have your standard, you know, driving mode where the steering wheel is a little loose. You have your sport, you have your comfort, you have all those different options, but I like to keep it in sport mode with the standard. This, this car has a sport steering, but it does not have a sport acceleration. I think you can purchase the performance upgrade. I, I couldn't see it in the like the options to buy it so that you're possibly not able to but maybe on other versions you can performance like purchase a performance upgrade that you can actually change it to like a, a high deployment setting this just has a standard and a chill mode the chill mode you just kind of have to press the gas a little bit more to get that instant torque but it's still very good to have in the chill mode i'm pretty sure also saves the battery a little bit too so why not have it another interesting thing is you'll notice that the glove box actually has no button inside here you literally just press a button in the infotainment and the glove box opens and then you have to manually close it. They haven't added the feature to, to automatically close the glove box, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities with Tesla, it really isn't. Also I noticed too on this year version, they kind of done away with the piano black. They listened to their customers, which is nice to see, and they've done away with the fingerprinty piano black. Nobody liked it. It was nice, it looked very nice in pictures and photos and videos, but when you like use the car for like a week, you got like a hundred fingerprints all over it, it looks gross. Now they kind of went this matte black, easy to clean uh, interior, which I love. And they also have some nice Alcantara on the doors, some nice Alcantara for the charging. Really, really like that too. A very good job there. I'm just driving through like corners and stuff and it's just like, I got so much confidence that it's just gonna hold. Cause there's weight, I'm assuming there's just, it's the weight that makes you feel that way, that when you're, when you want to throw it into a corner, you just, you just can. And it's just going to hold, even at big speeds, like, I don't think, I haven't seen too many Teslas drift. I know, I think one of them has a drift mode, if I'm correct, I'm not, not 100% sure, but I don't think you would really want to drift a Tesla. There's not really a reason. It's 
just kind of fast and cool. You, know, you feel really cool driving this car. That's another thing. Maybe it's just because it's a newer car and I'm, I'm, I do like Tesla. Like as much as I say they have build quality issues and they need to fix it, I do really like the company. I love what they've done. They're a tech company as well as an automotive company. And when you look at them from both sides, they're doing big things and it's you can't deny that. So I think that's gonna do it. I can continue on this car, but I don't think I should because this video will be three hours and nobody wants to hear anybody talk for that a long time. So I do recommend getting this car. I do recommend getting the all wheel drive range, long range, if you can, just for the range purpose, especially if you live in colder climate, like I mentioned, you really wanna do spring for it. But if you only have the budget for the base model, you will not be disappointed. Don't get it twisted. You will be very happy, even if you can get only a base model Tesla. All the features are still there. They're locked, however, to software, but they can be unlocked, I'm sure, in the future. So. It's a really cool car. Just this, I've ha I'm having so much fun and I don't want it to end. It's gonna be a sad time when I have to give this car back. So yeah, go out. If you have a chance to test drive it, I definitely recommend you do it and just pick a safe area and put the throttle down and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's hard to describe. You don't understand it until you've lived it. Give it a shot for yourself and let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to do something a little bit more consistent on the PRN channel. That is my goal, however. Uh, we'll see how things work out. So hopefully you'll see more of me. Hopefully you enjoy seeing me. Leave a comment, leave a like, and also make sure you subscribe to PRN. You can find me at Technically Cars on YouTube. I'm trying to grow my channel too. I do more POV stuff, so I'll have this car on there with the POV view. So kind of kind of interesting view. So if you want to check that out, I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, technically underscore cars, you can find me anywhere. So leave a comment, let me and Niall know what you think about the Tesla. I want to know people's stories. I want to know people's horror stories. I want to know everything. I want to know how much you hate the car and how much you love the car, because I do know people love to hate this car. So let me know in the comments, and if you like and you want to see more, leave a like, it really helps, helps the video out in general. and do us a big favor and encourage us to keep going. So hopefully you'll see me again on the PRN channel, um, but that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Take care.